Yeah, today we're here at the Royal Naval Submarine Museum in Portsmouth, which is uh, this building here and some other quite big buildings. Look, you've got a look at that propeller off a ship. It's absolutely huge. So, um, yeah, you can get across onto uh, the other side from uh, Gosport. We're in Gosport, by the way, today. So, there we are. Look, welcome to the Submarine Museum. So, don't exactly know where I've got to go, but yeah. Mm hmm. Well, you've got some interesting stuff in it. Yeah. It looks like there's just the uh, the top bit of a submarine below. there. Do they call it the Conning Tower or something like that? I don't know. Anyway, we shall no doubt find out in a second, folks. Yeah. There you are, look, Royal Navy Submarine Museum. Open from 10 a.m. till 4 p.m. from Wednesday till Sunday. It's a diving bell there. I think I remember seeing this online. I think it said it could go down to 1300 feet. Wow. This is the Busy Boats Lay Bay Learning Centre, but it's for five year olds. Yeah. There are some uh, families who wish they'd use this now instead of uh, that ocean explorer thing. Here we go then, LR3, made by Vickers Slingsby. Yeah, yeah that's that thing, by the way. Um, yeah, it's got two knots cruise speed, which. <laughs> To be perfectly honest, is awful if you're in like a 10 knot current because you'll be going backwards. So, yeah, and it can go to a maximum of 1500 feet. And then there's this thing, which is the Globe Probe, it's a dry diving bell which was uh, lowered to cable to a wreck site. Yeah, Globe Probe, oh, yeah, like 1500 feet, I thought it was 1300. So you've got your own little, uh, your little door there, and an emergency escape at the bottom by the looks as well. So you can uh, you can sort of get out and still leave the oxygen inside. These have all gone a bit, gone a bit wonk, but hey, look at this, folks. Yeah, bloody hell. Like being inside a uh, central heating system. Oh, look, you've got your little, your little spidey holes there, spy holes. Mm. And it says release nine turns. So that mean release it so it drops into the water. I don't know, and there's the 12 volt batteries. Where? Where are they? And that's your battery charger. Oh, the batteries must be inside that curved thing. Weird. Oh well, here we are. Who'd have thunk it? So, yeah, there's nothing up that way. Well, in fact, that's the back of um, Haslar, Haslar Hospital, which I've done in the past. It's actually got some nice underground um, cellars. And this looks like rail tracks here rail tracks in the past going from Haslar all the way down to the um, all the way down to the dockside but yeah this looks like the top half of a submarine yeah what do you think hmm. right so we're gonna go and see their in situ thing called HMS Alliance a submarine that's here wow look at that in the day look how many submarines we are Back in the day. Bloody hell. 
So it's a fair old jaunt down to the museum and you can see the Spinnaker Tower there look folks if you're not familiar with what that is that's the Spinnaker Tower in Portsmouth which I have been up there's a video of us going up that one HMS Seahorse leaving Portsmouth Harbour in 1933 yeah look at the size of that yeah Resolution propeller from HMS Repulse. This propeller cost three million pounds to manufacture, and that was back in the 1960s. Three million pounds! Bloody hell! Yeah, nice. Oh, I can see the submarine. I can see the top of it there. Yep. You know why? You know why Prince Andrew liked uh, like the submarine life, don't you? There you go. All the evidence you need. The longest serving weapon. The Mark 8 torpedo was the longest serving weapon in history. Mm. And it can travel at 40 knots. Well, that's interesting because that's double the speed of my uh, little boat. So this thing here, 40 knots. That's crazy. That's quite fast actually folks. That's pretty fast. Mm. Now tickets aren't cheap for this unfortunately, but they charge you £34 to come and see this. Okay? Which is ridiculous. However, if you are prepared to pay £44, well it's, it says £49 there but it's on offer at the moment, it's £44, instead of £34 you can see everything in Portsmouth which is about 11 museums including the Mary Rose and something else for a little bit more money and it's valid for one year. Right, so it's much better to get that ticket than the single attraction day ticket because that's just a joke that price. Well, look, it's telling you what you've got here. So, there you go. So, you've got the uh, actual submarine visitor center. Yeah. And number two and one, what's that then? That's the visitor entrance. So, we've come down there. Oh, yeah, we could pass two, which is the car park, three, which is the kiddies center. And so we've got five is the Fraser room and office suite which is whatever that is and six is Holland one nine is the Garden of Remembrance memorial wall and ten is that big building which is the visitor center but we really, we're really interested in number seven but yeah there's going to be some more submarines in here but uh, yeah Visitor Centre. Oh, I can see a submarine in there, look. It's a bit hard to see from here, though. A bit hard to see. So I've got to get into the Visitor Centre <coughs> and show me ticket. Unless it's extremely easy to get in for free, which I don't know, but... Oh, look, it's a toilet, folks. I can't resist. All right, see you in a minute. Now I got a big problem because I got limited time. For some reason, I forgot my battery pack. So if I don't uh, get this done quickly, we're screwed. There's a garden of remembrance up there. Let's have a look at the uh, visitor centre. Yeah. Little uh, protectors for the uh, propeller. BAE systems, yeah. Oh, yes. Hmm. VAE systems. And there is the Alliance. Hiya. 
How are you doing? Good, how are you? Very good, thanks. Good, good. Just see my colleague to scan you in. Yeah, brilliant. Hello there. Thanks. Okay. Thank you very much. Oh, sorry. Let's get the right screen. Right. Do you want me to make it bigger? No. I was on the selling screen, not the ah. scanning screen. Right. <laughs> it's always a way. Right, can I book you down for a time slot to go on board the Alliance submarine? Yeah, that? sure. Yeah, whenever's good. The next one's 12.15, is that all right? That's fine, yeah. yeah moment it's just yourself so oh brilliant there you go i'll have an exclusive uh, yeah, walk around then <laughs> thanks yeah right. cheers mate so i've got long in here it's got propellers from uh Boat, boat that carried out the Zeebrug raid. It's an attack periscope head from a uh, H class submarine. Mm. And uh, model of the Holland One, the Royal Navy's first submarine. That one there. I think Queen Victoria, didn't she say she didn't trust um, submarines? She thought it was a sneaky, sneaky um, thing. And she, she was like, you know, it's not British, you know. They'll be sneaking around. So there we are, look, there's a small submarine. Now that is small. I doubt very much you'd be able to stand up properly in that. Yeah. Hope you can see this, a bit dark. I'm not exactly sure what this is, but it looks like some sort of um, cruise missile or ballistic missile or something like that. That's a big old boy. What the hell is it? Some sort of ballistic missile. Hmm. USB port, look. Oh, it's rubber. It's rubber. Wow. Mm. So I've got, I've got five minutes to have a quick look before we go into the sub. HMS Vanguard coming into harbour. Mm. Right. HM Submarine. Well, I feel with the ticket price of thirty-four pounds, we are actually um, we're actually. Uh, Helping fund nuclear missiles. <laughs> oh, there's a cinema up here, right? So it's like all interactive kids things, really. Which, yeah, I don't know. Not my cup of tea, really. Yeah. The cinema is not working. Nope, no cinema, no cinema. It is not working. This is where I get my 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 big torch out. Should do really, shouldn't I? Might end up needing it in a bit. There we go. Let's have a look. That's the cinema. We're going to have to come back in here, but there we are, look. It would not be possible to film in here without my torch. So, uh, yeah, 
god alive a wooden wooden submarine look that's not crazy yeah a little air air bellows look yeah what the hell so again a bit dark in here but not when Matt comes round it ain't that's nice isn't it again without the torch I don't think you're gonna be seeing very much <laughs> oh dear probably come up you know like, no torches and you're like what why not I can't help it if you don't want to pay the electric bill and turn on the lights. <laughs> see a toilet and a MP3 player. Hmm. Interesting. Jolly Roger. I'm getting twitchy now. I think we'd better go and get myself into this uh, into this big submarine. So I'll catch you in a second. Oh look, there's a big old um, bell down there. Right. Got to get moving into that into that um, sub. We don't want to lose our space. Thank you. Thanks very much. <laughs> Great. Okay, so we are ready to get in. I've got my ticket, look. Yeah, one plus. That's... Oh, plus one. Yeah. It's a HMS Alliance. With my shadow in the way. That's the sort of scale you're dealing with. Hello. You, you want to say hello to me, don't you? Get my ticket. I'm a bit early. It's all right there. Get in before the rush if you... Oh yeah, that'd be good. Nice and quiet. Thank yeah. you very much. I have one puff of this before I go in. It's some sort of nautical tradition of uh, can't smoke on board, so you better smoke it before you go in. <laughs> yeah. So they made me this two years in Canada. They made me the Zippo like a representative. <laughs> Been quite hard, actually. Yeah. You been before? I haven't. No. No. I'm quite happy to walk around though and just film. I've got a few yeah, minutes yeah. To, to get a bit of... Well, just a little bit to give you a bit of light yeah. out of the boat. We're at the front here called the four ends. Yes. Uh, Are you happy me filming yeah, you, by the way? Right. Yeah, okay, thanks. Uh, this is the fire torpedo, uh, torpedo space, or the four ends as we call it. As you can see, we've got four torpedo tubes up there. Yeah. We've also got two at the back of the submarine as well, so we've got a total of six. 
Yeah. Behind you there is a Mark 8 torpedo, 21 and a half feet long. Did I hear that these were the most popular torpedoes, the most used by the Royal Navy? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. For, well, they're used for the longest time. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah 21 and a half feet long, weighs a ton and a half. Uh, and we carry 16 of them. Right. We carry 10 at the front here and 6 at the back. There will be four rubber tubes, one, two, three, same on the other side. So the only piece you can walk on is the middle piece. Right. It also be about 10 bunks in here as well, hanging on chains. Yep. And torpedoes. Um, we'd run about 66, 68 of a crew, very slightly, depending on what we're up to. We might have people like the Royal Marines on board with the canoes and that sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, but we've only got 48 bunks. Canoe down there. We've only got 48 bunks, so we hop bunks. You mm -hmm. finish work, you jump into the bunk of the guys just to do that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, obviously, you got a bit smelly after time. <laughs> uh, we, we didn't have a great deal of water in these boats. Uh, there was extra fuel tanks, or more fuel tanks, because they thought they might have to use them in the Pacific. I cut out vastly on storage of food and water first. That's why you see food stashed everywhere, especially mm. in this compartment, because it's the biggest compartment in the world. Yeah, sacks of yeah. food. Mm. Every little corner would be uh, possible. Uh, on our longer trips, the deck we're walking on and down the next passageway, we have got a food store, but that would be crammed. Mm. And then a small food store. The deck you're walking on here and down that next passageway, you'd probably have a couple of layers of cardboard boxes full of tin food as well. Right. Uh, don't forget as the food goes down the rubbish piles up and then it starts to smell a bit. Underneath the plate the ladder stood on there. We've got a garbage disposal unit. Oh. It's a posh name for a long tube. <laughs> um, we put our rubbish into biodegradable bags, put a weight in there and we can blow it out in the boat. But of course they can break. So we, uh, if we're going somewhere where we don't want to be seen, then we bring our rubbish back with us, mm. just in case, because we can give our position away by our rubbish flying around, that sort of thing. As you walk through the boat, the next compartment, underneath that compartment, is one of our two batteries. Uh, the other battery is down outside where the toilet area is, down there. Uh, and at the far end of that, down below, there's a small gap, that's where we've got our, our food store and our freezer. There are four messes in there, that's the main accommodation area, as I say. Around about 27, 28 lads lived in this, I think it was, in this first mess. They're like the sauna men, radar men, people like that. Second mess is the engine room lads, there's 14 in there. Third, more senior guys, and there's 12 in there. And the last one, the little tiny one, is the art artificers, the engineers of the boat, and there's six in there, and that really is small. Then you'll be through the second more tight door into the accommodation area. Oh, pardon me, mm. into the control room area. Can I just ask you to wait there a second, ma'am? And on this side you see the officer's accommodation. As you look in there, look up, and if you're looking into that piece, it sticks out the front of the fin. Right. And that's where we put the Marines, come up to periscope depth, put two in there, top it up with water, wind the top lid open, and they, away they go. Mm. And they might go down the back end and have one of our, uh, two of their canoes in one of our torpedo tubes. So. And then you'd be in the control room proper, two periscopes you can look through. Mm -hmm. First one is the attack uh, periscope, one lens. Uh, one eyepiece, sorry, and the other one is binocular, that's the surgeon periscope. Right. Two gauges on that side, down 140 feet. If you look between them, I'll low down, there's a, a deep diving gauge there, and uh, 500 foot was a safe working depth on this class or something. Mm. Right. Left hand corner, big mass of uh, levers and, di and uh, valves, and that's the diving panel. Then you'd be through into the second, into the passageway, toilets on the, on the, on the left, radio room, radio room on the right, batteries underneath. Var end on the right hand side, the little galley. Now, when you consider he's cooking anything up to 70 meals three times a day, mm. he's not doing bad. Then you'd be in the engine room proper, then the motor room. And the actual motors are underneath all the switches. You can just look down and see them. Yeah. And then you'd be in the after torpedo space. Mm. Right. Okay, thank you very yeah, much. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Your way through. Thanks a lot. Sorry about that, folks. All right. Oh. Yeah, I've been filmed. Yeah, I'm a coke. Uh, they won't. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. you can stand to either side. I'll just mind your own trouble the little things under there. Obviously, obviously a no-go area. Smoke, candles, bubble decoys, and all the boxes of food. And here's your. Uh, Here's your big old doors. And uh, these these are the bits that move up and down. So, yeah. <laughs>
So I think when you move that, everything moves. All of this moves. It moves around. So ch 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 chunk, ch 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 chunk comes into position. So yeah, and it would go that way to lock. So. Okay, light. They did fuel alterations, put extra fuel tanks on and that sort of thing, but cut down vastly on storage for food and water first, because obviously the trips across the Pacific are, are, are much better. Wow. <coughs> they also discovered the old Oh, Ooh, look, Tian. I hope it's been pat tested. It's like pressure relief it's valve or something, because it's got a big spring in it there. So, pressure, pressure gauges. Oh, here's your uh, door handle for the door. Little, little old light switches, look, you know, not even uh, spark proof, just normal, normal light switches. Wow, the bunks, yeah. Tiny space. God, you wouldn't even be able to get your back from side to side if you were big. It's for small people. What's this then? Torpedo battery safe. Torpedo battery alarm. Torpedo monitoring. Yeah. Torpedo monitoring test alarm circuit. Mm. So this transport stowaway, this side up. Well, air purifiers. So that's air filters. So look, they've got little lights with a switch on them. God alive. Little cables. Vacuum pressure. What's this then? What's that? Modification record. Ooh. Bradford Cylinders Limited. Hmm. Oxygen candles. Asbestos free. What's an oxygen candle then? Do you burn it to 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 create oxygen if you're running low on oxygen? You look three three bunks here. And there's your uh, there's your stuff underneath. So these are. I don't know if you can get in behind there, but uh, yeah. Distribution box. Oops. Little plate there. Don't know what that is, but oh hello. <laughs> I, it's, it's, it's funny in the darkness I'm sure some people have tried to walk in here and smacked themselves into this plastic thing there's the batteries down there batteries yeah probably like a um, hundred thousand amps worth of uh, power might be 24 48 volt I don't know what they ran the uh, electric motors on look at, that. look at that little cog up there wow turns turns two things at once goes upwards it goes sideways little, little boxes little more bunks look these are these are bunks here on the right hand side these are the bunks more bunks around the edge so you'd you'd eat you'd you'd be eating whilst people would be sleeping that's crazy you'd be like eating whilst they're sleeping uh, more bunks. Oh, that's the that's the same room. Sorry. Don't know what these are. Mail mailbox. This is a mailbox. It's locked up. Right. Ah. So more more of these. What's this then? It's a motor. It's a motor with a. Going in, it's 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 like an air vent. It's a vent mo motor. Imagine having that going above your head when you're trying to get to sleep. 
and your head's at this end of the bed because that's the light and you've got this motor going Boo! that's not cool is it that's not cool but look this must be the like officer officer bunks Sheesh. yeah you're all on top of each other but look they've got padding on the vent the vent uh, pipes possibly to try and dampen the sound from the air coming through the air vents pipes because they resonate quite a lot and i wonder what that is big old wheel with a locking pin as well look, you know you have to pull out the locking pin before the wheel will spin uh, and another one up in the corner look another wheel up there and more more like <laughs> cheap as chips bloody light switches yeah they've got a speaker up there so they may, maybe they've got like some sort of sounds sounds in here wow cupboard space and oh goes down into bits that we cannot go to so there is a, a sub level but maybe we can't visit that i don't know oh look it's just like a uh yeah it is a bedding area look these flip up and become beds but it's like a you know ready room you know somewhere where you could uh hang out look there's plug sockets up there normal plug sockets and a big speaker warning speaker and this that looks like a microphone that's a microphone so where's the where's the push to transmit where's the push to transmit on that then and what's around this side i don't know what's on this side there folks i can't even see up there because it's too far out of the way so here's your uh, no smoking light i think that goes without um without saying doesn't it no smoking yep here we go we're going in Whoa. and there's the back of the door Oh, key cupboard look fridge binoculars um captain's cabin long keys as well like really long keys like i've never seen well i don't know that key's pretty long it's like got extra teeth in it it's like extra high security or something <clears throat> A sneak look inside this cabin here maybe they just need to reach in and grab these um <laughs> grab these little spinners which is why they've got that that thing there so they don't have to disturb people wow loads of like little valves and things all over the place so you'd have to know what all this meant and where all this was going hey look a light socket for you to stick your fingers in and bzz, yeah wow they've actually got old bulbs here that's amazing oh look a tap a tap and it's just got pipe Rubber hose. What's, what's all this in here then? You got a server in there. You got a bloody server computer in there, probably for doing sound and light in here. I expect. Wow. Look at that. Yeah, the depth in feet. Actual depth, but he said it's it only. Oh, here we go. Oh no. 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 I'm gonna have to stop filming on my. Uh, on my DJI because we're out of power. Right, so we're now filming on my phone in 60p. So this looks like Ray and Steve's footage now. I think Alex films in 60p as well. Tell us in the comments whether you like the 60p or whether you like the old uh, cinematic. For this type of stuff where there's a lot of movement, close up, I would imagine you'd you'd say it's possibly better but when you're just walking around in a lot of places it's uh, neither here nor there but yeah gyro angle gyro angle no way so this would have been spinning up probably with a with a gyro and there'd be a light through there and it would actually probably tell you tell you what it was doing whoa look at this Look at this. This is bonkers. Target ship. This is a computer. Look, 
the target ship is at X degrees and your own ship is at this degree and then it'll tell you the range because a range finder time of minutes you you program everything into this and it makes sure you fire the uh... yeah that's um, probably the periscope or something because that just goes up look and these hydraulic Oops, sorry these hydraulic rams would lift that shumpf up there like that so amazing and it says oh look no solution it means you cannot there isn't you know and this would probably mean yeah you've got you've got a solution look bearing the bearing calculations amazing there's the control room wow look at this yeah, engine rpm and it goes up to like 400 rpm yeah Wow, here's your uh, speed selectors that will go through to the engine room where they would dial in the power you're asking for. Oh. Or uh, electrocution things. These are the old uh, voice boxes. The voice box would be so that um, they could talk from one end of the ship to the other. Mm -hmm. That's your steering wheel. That control your rudder left and right. So there you are, look, rudder indicator tells you tells you how far the rudder is off. Yeah. Yeah, we have we have one of these in uh, in the aircraft, and it tells you when your uh, balance is off. But yeah, this is a much bigger version, so it can tell you whether you're listening to the port or starboard. And there's another, there's another degree thing, but that's for whether the ship is tilting forwards or backwards. So as much as this one is telling you whether the, tip, whether the ship is tilting on its sides, that one is nose up, pitch up, pitch down. So that's the thing for that. But yeah, wow. Yeah, you can't see the side. And it goes up to 140 feet in depth. Oh, wow, yeah, you can actually see that on that big big uh, big meter oh. <laughs> does it turn as well so apparently if you look through there let's see if we can get it if you look through there where are we going to see outside? Oh yeah, that's the building outside. Look. I wonder if we can actually turn it. Is it locked off? Wow. That's fully locked off. I'm afraid, folks. So we got we got um, sonar or radar even. again hmm. now it shows you degrees in rise and dive but again they're going to use these as um, extra verification so you've got two positions here for the nose up nose down so you might have one that's got the um, the fins on the back and one might have the fins on the front, so you can make the front go up whilst the back would stay down, or you can make the back go up whilst the front would stay down. I'm imagining that's what it is, just a guess. And here's all your um, here's all your bleeds, so they would shout commands whether they want up or down, and, and they could let air in and out through these through these pipes. Up. I'll sit down on this. 
is it nautical nautical maps and their speed up to 20 knots wow this is interesting that's very funky It's a clock, but it's got three sets of colours. Interesting. What's this then? Don't know. And what's that? Red. Oh, that's a red clock. That's the green clock. It says green. Can you see it's green? And this is the purple clock. It's going to corresponding to these. So it's timing for something. Timing for some sort of event or... Wow! This one's cool because it's got two. So it's... Yeah, one. One is manky as hell. Yeah. And a focus control. Getting better. Where would you put your foot? There you go. There you go. Now works better. That's a hell of a lot better. So, obviously, the People don't normally grab the controls, but now he's in focus. There we go. That's better. But there's 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 mankiness on the screen. But yeah, have a quick look. Can you see? Can you see? Spinning guitar, look, folks. I had a funny feeling that the uh, camera started recording in uh, portrait mode then, so if it did, I apologise. There's writing on these, but I can't read what it is. Writing on them, and this is some sort of Periscope of some description, perhaps periscope. I don't know. Ah. Ooh, what is it? Radio room. Radio. Main supply. Meter switch. I think it's probably a radio room. Ooh. And that might be radar. Yeah, that might be a radar. Now, I've already banged my head here, which just goes to prove a point that these things are dangerous. <laughs> I'm sadly the cuts. Yeah. That's the back of one of those, uh, those dial gauges, look huge. Quite a bit of air coming through here, yeah? it's good ventilation. So. This has got a metal door on it, a metal slide door. So this is the wireless office. Oh, so this is the wireless office. So I don't know what that other place was then. But yeah, tunable radios, absolutely huge. little lights down here would come on to tell you that the voltages are all working. Yeah, communications, probably encrypted, encrypted data traffic and all the, uh, the radios over there. Mm. Oops. Oh, toilet. <laughs> nice. And another toilet. Why do they why do they put you on a throne so high in the air, I wonder? Why so high? That's really high. Yes. Oh, 
This one's got a toilet and a shower. Look at that, that rinsey thing there's probably a shower. God alive. Oops, banging my head all the time in here. <laughs> ah, sluice room. Oh, shower cubicle. Look at that. Shower cubicle. Yeah. You have to get three in there at a time. Ooh. So yeah, more cleaning. Oh look, a galley. Now that's a lot smaller than I was expecting. That is micro size. Hey Brady, how would like, you like to be in this tight, tight space, mate? Unbelievable. So through a door. Oh, we're all on. Piece of levitating metal now. We're in the engine room. So... Oh look, they come with their own lathe to uh, repair stuff on the go. Wow, look, relay switches. Similar to the types of things we've seen in uh, some of the deep level shelters, look. Rotary, rotary switches and big relays. Very big. Hey, Klaxon. Klaxon. Yeah. So they've got a copy of the depth meters in the engine room so they can see what's going on. A little... Is that a light? I think that's actually a light. It's not a microphone. Look, it's got little terminals in the end of it. Maybe it did have a microphone in it. No, no, it is, it is a microphone. Look, because it says main intercom up there. So yeah, the mic element's being taken out of it, but yeah. Here's the engines. Here's the engines, and you've got um, basically engine timing. So you can time the engine, air start to start the engine, engine clutch to engage the engine. So you can actually put the powertrain through to the propeller or just run the engine with it in idle. So, yeah. Fuel pump pressure, timing, spray valve. I don't know what that is, a spray valve. Yeah. Look, here's your... Uh... Yeah. God, look at all these. Old. Wow. Aft main motor armature. That must, be a, that must be a speaker of some description, I think, a speaker. Fuse containers, it's all fuses in there. We're getting a 50 hertz flicker here, folks. 50 hertz flicker. Yeah. Port tail catch order reply. So it's a communication system. Port to the clutch order reply. Port break orders reply. So you, you basically confirm that you've received a command from the uh, from the bridge by switching those little lights into a different position. Same thing on this side, so two engines. Exactly the same sort of controls. What? This is made by Harley Davidson. Genuine Harley Davidson motor oil. That can't be real, surely. <laughs> I think somebody stuck that on there. It is, it's been stuck on there, look. <laughs> Somebody's idea of a joke. Ooh. Rockers, all your rockers here, massive rocker pins going down, and obviously 
those are operating all the valves here pressure gauges, pounds per square inch and temperature of the engine up there in Fahrenheit. And they've actually got Fahrenheit gauges here for each of the cylinders. So. Same thing on the other side, so each cylinder, so we can monitor each one independently. And these are interesting. This is the uh, probably fuel injection system. And you've got visible, visible containers, so you can check the quality of the uh, the diesel going through. Make sure there's no contamination. Sorry, mate, if you want to squeeze past. Cheers. Oh, there's a little thermometer just on its own there, hanging. But yeah, these have got their own little um, trim mechanisms on them, so you can probably trim them as it's running. You could probably turn, turn it as the engine's running slowly and trim stuff out. So you're actually doing your repairs on the fly and I guess the way they would do that is um, there'd be a gap here it'll actually be oh sorry I've got my it's very hard to hold this phone but under here you'd have a gap a gap and that gap you'd measure it and then you would turn that until you've got your perfect gap um, yeah so Ooh, that's interesting. Don't know what that is. Don't know what that does. Yeah, it might have it might have actually gone onto that pipe up there, but it's been taken off for some reason. So I don't know what these would have been. Engine clutch. Just a, just a clutch mechanism. So this is the guy who'd actually engage the engine to the propeller on both bits. And yeah, engine clutch emergency man wheel down there. So if um, if this little lever didn't work, you'd have to manually operate it from there. Probably yeah, steam driven, steam driven. So when you operate that control, it probably. Uh, helps you out but if the steam's gone down you'll have to do it manually mm field regulator mm field mine field or main motor field there you are main engines we've got the clutch clutch engaged clutch disengaged I know what these are. Sorry. I know what these are. These are the electric motors. These are the sorry. These are the obviously the uh, the diesels. All right there. These are the diesels. Yeah. So you can engage or disengage the diesel. And then you've got the electric motor, so you can disengage the diesel, shut it down and run on electric motors silently. So that's the electric motors. It's one, two. So that makes sense now because as per this, as per this, they can actually spin the propeller by having the, um, having both clutches in. So the clutch on the right and the left will spin the propeller. However, having the engine clutch in, but the tail clutch out, will just use these motors as generators. So you run the diesel generators, these motors then become generators. So they pump battery power back into the batteries to, um, to charge up the batteries. However, if you want to run on silent, 
you run on the electric motor there with the clutch in, but you stop the engine and take the clutch out of the main the main drive shaft. Wow. Yeah, makes sense now. I just didn't think they'd be that small. I didn't think they'd be that small. But look, turning gear. That there is a turning gear. So you you engage, you know, the, 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 the props on the back, the um, the rudders and stabilizers, I think they call stabilizers and, and rudders. So you can actually um turn the boat. Yeah. Wow, look at these then. Big old big old switches basically. Massive switches. So these these are the huge huge contactors look for the electric motors probably and the gen generators so literally you would he says it's very hard to see without the torch isn't it seems as well i'm glad i brought it now right this is a pull bar and you pull it and it'll pull out these two contactors chunk in one go and then you've got this one contactor here but this one is connected to that one as you see when you pull that one it'll also pull these ones but if you pull this one it won't pull that one so this one being pulled forces that one this one will come out without that one yeah interesting and then they've got um, a 2000 amp fuse 2000 amps yeah wow and these these rotary controls here tell you to increase the pressure which would increase the speed um, Wow big controls for other electrical systems main motor reversing switch Wow so you can put it into reverse and go backwards if you need to Wow okay and then this is this a switch? No, this is just a bar you can hold on to. Wow, okay. And same thing on this side, it's duplicated. Now I notice up here we've got like a lot of, um, it tells you how many amps you're using. Discharge, you can discharge up to 4,000 amps. When you're charging, you can charge up to 2,000 amps. But you've got to watch the battery temperatures when you're charging the batteries because the old lead acids don't like to be pummeled. So, um, yeah. Right, what have we got then? After outlet, inlet, stern. That's a big old uh, lever, look. A head. It says a head. You pull that chung. Has it got one over here like that? No. So a head. So you pull that from there, boom, down here to that position. And it pulls one, two, three, four of these contactors all at once, so they all go. Just basically like a load of light switches, you know, but just on a bigger scale. Turn on your motor, turn off your motor. Wow. Again, these are the same switches, but they've actually been put in the out position, so you can see they're not making contact. So in this case, you could push push these up, but they're probably not going to go. No. Besides which, I don't want to get accused of uh, trying to steal a submarine. So uh, better leave those switches where they are. Okay, another one of these things here, I don't quite know what it is. Priming under load conditions. Hmm, and these things up here, I don't know what they are, they must be some sort of emergency system. Sorry, if you want to go through, I, yeah, just just walk straight past. Don't worry about me. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping I'm not keeping you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's another 
way out to the surface. This is interesting. What's that? Then? It's a little, looks like a little air filter or something. It's got um, membrane on it. Oh, I've just hit my head. And then we've got degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah. <laughs> So this is the inside of a torpedo. Didn't think it would have so much space in it. It looks like there's lots of lots of space areas. I would have thought they would have used that space up. There's clockwork mechanisms down here. This is probably the type timing mechanism I would have thought. If it's got clockwork. Lots of clockwork. It's probably pressure pressure meters to tell what depth it's at. And um, yeah, interesting. Kind of life jacket look. Yeah. An escape hatch. Mm. Oh look, you've got rails, rails here, probably for loading, loading the torpedoes in, yeah, another rail on this side. I can't get a chat either, really. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> yes, wow, look at that, look at that folks, that's mad. Well, we've got a thorough, we had a thorough look then, but I'm, I'm fascinated by just one thing. I can't work out what this thing is, and there's a few of them on board. Just wondered what that was. Is this something to do with air? Yeah, uh, you know, at the front, did you see the, um, actually we looked in the first mess, there was four canisters. Right. There was a fan under there. Ah. There's, there's crystals in there. And we draw the air through and they absorb the CO2. Right, okay. Well, these, we put, for want of a better term, a big fat sparkler goes in there, made of ferric oxide. Right. So we put an electrical charge through and it gives off pure oxygen. Ah. Which helps the air situation a little bit. Right. One of our guides comes from Australia every year, because we still have Australians in our submarines. Mm -hmm. And he bought one of these on eBay. Right. Every year. Took it back, because he lives with his sister. And when he comes over here for six months, he puts his rum bottles in there, because she can't, she has never worked out how to open the thing yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nice. I know the on the nuclear subs now they tend to use these um, hydrolysis uh, things where they oh, put right. hydrogen and uh, then they electrify the water and That's they get right, oxygen yeah. out. But they've got to dump the hydrogen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. but keep the oxygen. Yeah. 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 Oh yes, yeah, like I went from these to build big tankers and they, yeah, you know, different situations on there like yeah water. You make loads and loads of fresh water, but you, then you've got to put things back into it to make it drinkable and that sort of thing. Yeah. 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 Oh, good stuff. Well, thanks, yeah, Mick. Pleasure. Brilliant. Thanks a lot. Sorry I had to use the light, but unfortunately, you Where can't you, you, you can't see anything otherwise. I'm from South Wales. Oh, South. I'm from well, originally from the north. Oh, right, right. Yeah. No, around the valleys and Barry and Cardiff, I am. Uh, Port Malik area. Then I went over to Oslo Street, right in the border. And oh, yeah. Outside, yeah. Nice. Then I left on the 16 and which never went back. Yeah. <laughs> Well, certainly a nice ship. There is another under. There's an underneath layer, but it's kind of like the yeah, only, crawlways, is yeah, it? In, in the the first half. I'll, I'll put this just up here because it's very hard to see otherwise. Underneath the uh, the accommodation area, at, at this end of it, you, there's a ladder down. It looks a long way down because the decks disappeared. There's a food store and a little engineer store there. Uh, underneath where the sink is, outside the, the officers' accommodation, there's one down there. And the freezers down there, a couple of bits of machinery, and there's also a little sonar room down there as well. Ah. And then uh, you come back as far as uh, the after periscope, and there's a, a piece down there. There's, there's not a great deal down there, uh, just the um, the gyro compass and that sort of thing. Mm. And the rest of it is tanks, or the, well, the second half of that bit is, is the second battery. Yeah. And back here it's all machinery. Yeah. But under the, underneath the furrow top, there's space, and this space, the tanks for moving around to balance it up. Ah, uh, right. Do you want to come through? Yeah. <laughs> and there are lots of things to trip on, here. Thank you. 
Oh, absolutely fascinating. I mean, what, what's in the, uh, is it, do they call it the Conning Tower? That, yeah, um, up there, there's, well, there's not a great deal, actually. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> there is a captain's cabin up there. Really? Yeah, it's, it's probably about that big. Wood-lined, mm -hmm. horrible place, never used. Um, I think it was because it was a bit of an Americanism, they put him in it, put him mm. in there. And it's actually inside the pressure hull, obviously. Right. Um, but, of course, when the engines are running on the surface, the air is dragged down there. And you have to force yourself up the ladder. Mm. But of course, in the rough weather, that, that water used to because there, there was always water flying in the control room. Right. And uh, that place was very damp and horrible. Yeah. And we just used to use of storage for very light stuff like paperwork and stuff like that. Yeah. And the only time I ever knew one was filled up was that poor tea boat we told them uh, they sold to the Israelis, mm. and they. <laughs> Up there and underneath, underneath the case and on the top, they added spare engine parts and cylinder heads. That's why. And she sailed on a Saturday afternoon from over there. Oh, right. The city. And we opened our legs like that so she could come up the inside of us. I went. Right. Yeah. Always worried about the lad who was watching the football match with us because he left quarter hour before the end. <laughs> Of course, they never even got on. I, I like that visual imagery of like you. She departed from yeah. between the legs. Yeah. Well, <laughs> she was the. It was the ex totem. Um, when she was commissioned, the uh, one of the tribes in Canada gave them a totem pole, mm -hmm. which was always it's in the museum, on, on the on the front of the boat there. And they said, if you ever go to sea without that, it'll be bad luck. Mm. The first time she did was when the Israelis had it, and she went. Yeah. Yeah. One of those things. Yeah. Okay. Looks like you've got somebody wanted to ask a question, yeah. so I'll leave you. Thank you very much, Thank Mick. You. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Right. We're on our way out now, folks. We're on our way out. Oh, here we go. There it is. Torpedoes going down there, popping out the back. Look. Yeah. And that's when we just come out of the side side hatch entrance. There she is. There she is. I never would have thought there would have been like a captain's room up up in there, but if they say it wasn't very nice, you'd think he'd want us to like go up there and hide away, you know, and be on his own a bit, but that's what I would like be. It'd be the wank room, wouldn't it? It'd be like one sailor at a time. No, sorry, you can't say that. No. <laughs> that's probably what they used to use it for. Though. It's the only bloody piece you get on board up there, I expect. I'm sure they never did that. They would never do that in the Navy. No. Yeah, there's your rudder, rudder, and there's your rear stabiliser. And right up there, I'll show you, right up there is the forward stabiliser. So that's your forward stabiliser up there. So you could make the front of this, literally make the front of the ship go up and the back of the ship go down with the stabilizers as well as changing the ballast, which you probably use both. But if you were if you were stationary, you would use ballast, you'd pump water back and forth to change the angles. But if you were actually moving through the water, you could effectively use then the, uh, the stabilizers because they'd be cutting through the water. So yeah, nice. Nice, uh, nice propellers there. Uh, not the newer types that they have on some of the newer subs, like the corkscrews, to eliminate noise. But it's funny actually how they come out on arms out of the uh, the body. I would have, I I kind of expected them to be behind the ship somehow. But yeah, yeah, I'm sure they've got different different types, different variants. But All right, let's go and have a look at the bits we missed in here if there are any. I don't think there was very much in the, uh, in the, I think I basically did most of what was in there. So let's have a little look in this one, which is where they've got some more live submarine exhibits now. It's actually quite, quite good filming with this. I might bring the, uh, through here. No, it's locked. That's just the toilets. I just go into the toilets by mistake. <laughs> no, you get into this building from down here. Trust me, a oh, 
sorry. Trust me, eh, folks? Trust me. This is the Navy's first submarine. I was trying to, I was trying to shield the mic so you weren't getting the wind noise, but I ended up putting my hand over the, the front, which is not good. Oh my God, they know we're coming. They know we're coming. Royal Navy's first submarine. Whoa. Is that it then? Ask the submarine. Where do you put the people? Where do you put the humans? Hmm. Oh, this just looks like uh, some bit of equipment for it. God knows. What is it? Launching ceremonies. So there it is when it went out. Commissioning ceremonies. Look, it's Stephen Frylock. Yeah. And there's the Alliance. Wow. When Portsmouth was a little bit more of a crazy naval uh, place. There's not so much. It's still got a bit, but not as much. So what does it say? No entry? So how do I get in here then? How does that work? No entry. Oh, are you, are you, are you, are you literally kidding me? Like, you can't go through this door, you've got to go through this door, but then you can walk round and back out through that door. Are, you, are they serious? Whose idea was that? That's bloody silly. Here we go, then. Hmm, here it is. It's the first Royal Navy submarine. HMS Holland 1. like a pregnant whale. Oh, look at that engine in there. That's the engine. That's an electric motor, look. Uh, there's the engine. So yeah, these were designed to run on electric, or maybe they were generating power. But yeah, because it looks like it's a direct diesel drive, but that's a generator to um, to allow them to uh, produce produce electricity on board the ship. Let's have a look if I'm right then. Right. So you've got engine exhaust. 70 horsepower electric motor used to propel the submarine in the water. So it was used as a motor. However, they can also be used as generators to create electric. So, ah, lots of batteries. Batteries, battery, batteries. And then, um, yeah, torpedoes. Yeah. Hmm. Go and have a look up on the top then. Thanks. Oh, thank you very much. Care of your head. Oh, yeah. It's a croacher. There's the torpedo tube. Wow. It is very low in here. I, I can just about stand in this section here, but not in this section. Ooh. Morning, dude. 
attempt to open hatch. Of course, it's amazing how the uh, how badly the um, the engine's rusted. I can't get over how much that's rusted. This maybe this wasn't um, maintained. Maybe it was like scrapped somewhere and then brought back to the museum in a, a pretty bad state. Because I can't I can't see why the metal would um, corrode that much unless it's been exposed to the elements. can understand the outside because it, it's in contact with uh, the sea so unless you keep painting it it's going to get a bit pitted which it looks like it is but, oh sorry fingers fingers very wide angle camera on this folks ah that's why it's called a Holland because John Philip Holland yeah yeah you want to get these sorted out otherwise you, you're never going to get it Get it in the water. That's the exhaust, I believe. That's a battery there. Lead acid battery. 60 of these were located under the deck of the Holland, and the batteries alone weighed 25 tons. hollow. I, th I thought these would be solid actually. Hollow and hollow. Yeah, interesting. And the whole, the whole back part behind that would uh, rotate. Again, the propellers are looking a bit, um, a bit like they've seen better days. But I think they've been treated now to stop the rust. Sorry. So there we are, look. Yeah, you see what I mean about... Look at that. Look at the state on that. And these. I mean, the, the corrosion that's gone on is... is quite hefty, really. Hmm. So, well... Well, folks... See me ever again. Click like. See ya.